Hey there, science fans, Gefalax here, and today we're diving into the amazing world of cells. Cells are the building blocks of all living things, from the smallest bacteria to the largest animals. They're like tiny factories working together to keep organisms alive and functioning. We're going to unlock the secrets of these microscopic marvels and explore their incredible structure and function. So buckle up, get your lab coats ready, and let's get started. Let's kick things off with the cell theory, the foundation of cell biology. This theory has three main points. All living organisms are made up of cells. Cells are the basic units of structure and function. Think of them like mini-organs. All cells come from pre-existing cells. Cells arise from the division of other cells. Now, let's meet the main players in the cell world, uh, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are like the simple, minimalist folks of the cell world. They're smaller and don't have a nucleus, which is like the cell's control center. Bacteria are a great example of prokaryotes. On the other hand, we have eukaryotic cells, which are larger and more complex. Think of plants and animals. They're all made up of these sophisticated eukaryotic cells. Cells have some basic structures, whether prokaryotic or eukaryotic. First, the plasma membrane controls what goes in and out. Next, the cytoplasm is where all the action happens. DNA or RNA is the cell's instruction manual. Finally, ribosomes make proteins. Let's give a big round of applause for the plasma membrane, the cell's very own security guard. This flexible barrier regulates what enters and exits the cell. Think of it as a picky bouncer at a club. It also plays a crucial role in cell communication, allowing cells to talk to each other. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it, and the plasma membrane does it with style. Plant cells are like chefs making food through photosynthesis. They have special structures to help them. First, chloroplasts, the photosynthesis superstars. These green organelles act like tiny solar panels. The cell wall provides support and protection. Finally, the central vacuole stores water and nutrients. Quick recap, prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotes are minimalist campers, eukaryotes pack everything. Prokaryotic cells are small, simple and lack a nucleus. Bacteria are prokaryotes, eukaryotic cells are larger, complex with a nucleus. Think plants, animals, fungi, all eukaryotes. Let's give it up for the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. These bean-shaped organelles are responsible for producing ATP, the cell's main energy currency. Think of them like tiny power plants, constantly generating the fuel that keeps the cell running. Mitochondria are essential for a wide range of cellular processes, from muscle contraction to nerve impulse transmission. So next time you're feeling energized, give a shout out to your mitochondria. They deserve it. Now let's step into the nucleus, the cell's very own command center. This is where you'll find the cell's DNA neatly packaged into chromosomes. The nucleus acts like a vault, protecting this precious genetic information. It also plays a vital role in controlling cellular activities by regulating gene expression. Think of it as the cell's very own conductor, orchestrating the symphony of life. Time to shine a light on ribosomes, the protein synthesis superstars of the cell. These tiny structures are responsible for reading the genetic code from the DNA and using it to assemble amino acids into proteins. Ribosomes are like the construction workers of the cell, following blueprints to build all sorts of important molecules. Wherever they are, ribosomes are hard at work, churning out proteins that the cell needs to function. Get ready to explore the Golgi apparatus, the cell's very own post office. This organelle has a vital job. It modifies, sorts and packages proteins and lipids acting like a cellular distribution center. Think of it like a well-organized warehouse where proteins are tagged, packaged and shipped to their final destinations within the cell or even outside of it. The Golgi apparatus ensures that the right molecules get to the right place at the right time, keeping the cell running smoothly. Now, let's talk about lysosomes, the recycling centers of the cell. These membrane-bound organelles are filled with digestive enzymes that break down waste materials and cellular debris. 
Think of them like tiny garbage disposals, grinding up old organelles, worn out proteins and other cellular junk. Lysosomes help keep the cell tidy and efficient by breaking down unwanted materials into their building blocks, which can then be reused to build new molecules. Get ready for a ride on the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, a network of interconnected sacs and tubules that extends throughout the cytoplasm. The ER is like the cell's highway system, transporting molecules and materials from one part of the cell to another. There are two types of ER, rough and smooth. Rough ER is studded with ribosomes, making it a hub for protein synthesis. Smooth ER, on the other hand, lacks ribosomes and is involved in lipid synthesis and detoxification. Let's meet the centrioles, tiny structures involved in cell division. These cylindrical organelles are found in animal cells and play a crucial role in organizing the mitotic spindle, which helps separate chromosomes during cell division. Think of centrioles as the conductors of the cell division orchestra, making sure everything goes according to plan. Get ready to explore the cytoskeleton, a network of protein fibers that extends throughout the cytoplasm. The cytoskeleton provides structural support for the cell, much like the scaffolding of a building, but it does more than just hold the cell together. The cytoskeleton also plays a role in cell movement, intracellular transport, and maintaining cell shape. It's like the cell's all-purpose framework, providing both structure and flexibility. Let's play a game of spot the difference with plant and animal cells. While both share many similarities, there are some key distinctions. Plant cells, like we discussed earlier, have a rigid cell wall, chloroplasts for photosynthesis, and a large central vacuole. Animal cells, on the other hand, lack these structures but have their own unique features. For instance, animal cells possess lysosomes, those handy recycling centers, and centrioles, which play a crucial role in cell division. Let's dive into the cytoplasm, the jelly-like substance that fills the cell and surrounds all those amazing organelles we've been learning about. The cytoplasm is a bustling hub of activity where many essential cellular processes take place. From protein synthesis to energy production, the cytoplasm is where the action is. So next time you think about a cell, remember that it's not just empty space, it's filled with this dynamic and essential substance. We've already met the plasma membrane, the cell's gatekeeper, but let's take a closer look at this remarkable structure. The plasma membrane is selectively permeable, meaning it allows some substances to pass through while blocking others. This selectivity is essential for maintaining the cell's internal environment and ensuring that only the right molecules enter and exit. It's like the cell's communication center, facilitating all sorts of important interactions. Let's give a round of applause to vacuoles, the unsung heroes of plant cells. These large membrane-bound sacs play a vital role in maintaining the plant's structural integrity, storing nutrients and even detoxifying harmful substances. They're involved in a wide range of functions from maintaining turgor pressure, which keeps plants upright and firm, to storing pigments that give flowers their vibrant colors. Vacuoles are essential for plant survival and play a crucial role in making the plant world so diverse and beautiful. Time to revisit chloroplasts, those green machines that power the plant world. These remarkable organelles are the sites of photosynthesis, the process by which plants convert sunlight into chemical energy in the form of glucose. Thanks to chloroplasts, plants are able to produce their own food from sunlight, water and carbon dioxide, making them the ultimate self-sufficient organisms. They're the foundation of most food chains on Earth, providing energy for countless other organisms, including us. Let's wrap things up with a look at flagella and cilia, whip-like appendages that some cells use for movement. Flagella are long and whip-like, propelling cells through their environment. Think of sperm cells which use their flagella to swim. Cilia are shorter and hair-like, moving fluids or particles across the cell's surface. Flagella and cilia show the diversity of structures that cells use to navigate their surroundings. And there you have it, explorers. 
We've journeyed through the incredible world of cells, from their structures to their functions. Cells are the fundamental units of life, working tirelessly to keep us alive. We've learned about prokaryotes and eukaryotes, explored organelles like the nucleus, mitochondria and chloroplasts, and discovered the intricate processes within these microscopic marvels. The world of science is vast and fascinating, and there's always something new to discover. Until next time, Stay curious.